His son did get hurt. Uh, did God forsake the people who did that? Did God turn against them in hatred? No. He offered them the same forgiveness that he gave to me and you. So if we want to stop displaying the outrageously bad love of man and start living in the startling love of God, we have to learn to forgive. No matter what somebody has done to you, no matter what somebody has done to the person that you love, we have to learn to forgive them because that's what God does. And that's the, that's the love that we should be living in as his children. The people that we read about in Scripture that crucified Jesus, see, they did worse to him than anybody has ever done to you. They did worse to him than, than anybody will ever do to you or anybody you care about. And what was Jesus' response to all of it? How did Jesus respond to the people who were torturing and killing him? He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Whenever they were pulverizing Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them. That is an outrageous love. That is bold, that is unusual, and that is startling to Satan. But going beyond that, what else does it take to live in the outrageous love of God? You have to be bold in your faith. You have to be putting your faith before everything, and I do mean everything else in your life. Is your love unusual? Meaning that you don't look at someone's appearance or affliction that they can't change and judge them for it. It's like if someone were to walk in here wearing rags because that's all they have, how would they be greeted? Would they be welcomed or would they be outcast? And when I say welcoming somebody, I don't mean tolerated. Like I, I don't mean welcomed in that nobody asked them to leave. They were allowed in our presence. That's not what I mean. When I say welcome, I mean going up to them and saying, it's great to have you here. I'm, I'm glad you came. You want to come sit with me? See, that's welcoming. And I'm not saying y'all don't do that. Don't think I'm coming in here, you know, accosting y'all. It's not what I'm doing. That goes for anywhere. Any church, anywhere. Is that how we're welcoming people? Whenever I was at Mill Creek, uh, our pastor at the time, he dressed up like a homeless person and sat at the end of the driveway going into the church. And he had a sign, I don't remember what his sign said, but uh, he sat out there, he had his all dressed up, he had a fake beard and a hat and everything. You couldn't tell it was him. But several of us went out and, and invited the person. We didn't know it was him. We thought it was a homeless person. And so we went out and we invited him in and everything. And of course, when we got out there, we realized it was him. And he was like, go away, you know, don't tell anybody. And so whenever church was about to start, uh, he always came up and, and greeted everybody, you know, like Brother Anthony did. And uh, as he's coming up, he, he comes through the back door. And of course, he's still dressed up. He has a sign with him. And he's like limping up to the front, you know, through the aisle and everything. And afterwards, he came up to me and he, he told me, he said, you know what several people told me? He said that there were, there were like 15 women who came up to him who all said, oh, you know, I had my hand in my purse and that pepper spray and I like to got you. Why? <laughs> but see, that's, that's the, the, the welcoming that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about tolerated, meaning you're allowed in. I'm talking about welcoming. Come in here, brother or sister. I love you. That is the love of God. And that's what we should be. That's how we should be loving other people because God loves those people. And so to close out this morning, I think we can all do some self-reflecting. And ask ourselves, do we have an outrageous love like God that's bold in the face of adversity, unusual to the world, and startling to Satan? Or do we have an outrageous love that God would consider excessively bad? I'm sorry, extremely bad or excessive. Let's pray. God, as, as we close out this morning, I, I just pray that, that somebody in here, you know, that I haven't touched their heart, but you, God. God, I hope that you have, have spoken 
uh, through me this morning. God, I hope that you have spoken through the music this morning and that somebody in here has been changed by your word. Lord, we just, we love you so much and we just pray that, that we would have that bold and unusual and startling love that you have, God. And God, I pray that, that for myself, that I would be able to get away from that, that bad and excessive love that, that, that people have. That we as humanity live in all too often. God, rid me of that. And God, bring me into your love. Bring me into your kingdom so that I can love like you. Lord, we just ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing together. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. It's my first opportunity to hear you, and I pray that the Lord will continue to use you in a powerful way with our folks here. We want you to, uh, to come back this evening at 5 o'clock as we share together in our Sunday Night Live. Uh, he's going to be speaking during that as well. So I hope that you will be here at 5 for that and then stay for our discipleship training groups, which will be meeting immediately following that time.